Are we having the best night of our lives? Yes! Oh, fucking oh. This is, seriously, best audience ever. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Annabelle, start. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to stage, Angus Hodge! Hey. So uh, I was walking along the other day and this homeless guy comes up to me and he asked me for money and I gave him a couple of coins from my change pocket and he gets them and he counts them in front of me <laughs> and he goes, 20 cents? Why don't you just shit on my face? <laughs> and I was like, wow, man, I know we're going through tough times and the economy's in the toilet. But if I can shit on someone's face for 20 cents, we mustn't be doing too badly. The lucky country, you know what I'm saying? I nearly gave him a fiver to see what else I could get. I, I was hanging out with a friend of mine who's a couple of decades older than me, and just randomly in conversation, uh, she goes, Angus, how old are you? And I told her, I said, I'm 24. And she got this really weird look on her face, and she goes, wow. I could be your mum. And I was like, that is a very unusual way for you to tell me that you slept with my dad. <laughs> I like my dad. My dad's a, a nice guy. He's proud of me, but he shows it in, in weird ways. I had a birthday not too long ago, and for my birthday, he gave me this sleeping bag. And he goes, this is because you're going to be travelling around a lot more with your comedy to places like a fucking warehouse in wherever the fuck we are. And as he hands it to me, he goes, and the guy at the store said it'll be good for about 10 years, and then you'll have to buy yourself a new one. And I was like, well, Dad, surely within uh, 10 years, people will be paying me to stay in hotels. And my dad goes, the guy at the shop said it'll be good for about 10 years, and then you'll have to buy yourself a new one. Thanks for the support there, Dad. I, uh, I always remember the sex talk my dad gave me, the, uh, the birds and the bees talk. We were, we were driving, I was living out of home for the first time and we were driving to where I was going to be living and halfway through the trip, he does this, he's in the driver's seat and he goes... Wear a condom and he kept driving and we never spoke of it again. <laughs> it's really good advice which I sometimes follow. I, uh, I was at a friend's uh, party not too long ago. I was in his shed. He had one of those fully decked out garages and he had one of those ones with like a pool table and a bar. And he had this sign behind the bar which had one of the worst things I've ever, ever read on it. It had written in big letters, If you're queer, you're not welcome here. And I was like, wow, that's a pretty full-on and horrible, awful thing to put out into the universe, you know? Because I am, a, I am a heterosexual man, but I have done some things that would probably make me unwelcome in this guy's garage. This lady's a fan of it for some reason. <laughs> Exhibit A, I used to live with a, another comedian, a guy called Dave, and we used to play a game in which you got your scrotum out, and when the other person looked at it, you got a point. <laughs> that was it. That was the game. That's all there was. We came up with a name for it. Dave suggested sack attack. I one-upped him and it was forevermore known as scrotal recall. And it got really serious. It got to the point where we went out and we got a whiteboard to hang on the wall so that we could keep an official scrotal recall tally at all times. And we decided that you should get extra points if you showed your ball sack to the other person in a particularly creative way. <laughs> Dave's best one ever was when we were in the kitchen together and he was standing next to the fruit bowl and he goes, Hey man, check out how hairy these plums are. <laughs> Bonus point. Now, me and Dave don't live together anymore, but sometimes we still play this game. Every now and then my, my phone will go off and it'll be a picture of Dave's balls. 
which is uh, wonderful when you're on a date, trust me. But uh, not long after we stopped living together, I get this phone call from Dave and he goes, oh, I've got the day off work, I'll come around, I'll play video games, I'll be around in about half an hour. And I thought, this is great, I'm going to get Dave, right? So uh, I, I got my balls out and the doorbell rang. Sorry, I didn't just sit there for half an hour with my balls out. That would have been weird in the game where we show each other our balls. Uh, the doorbell rang. <laughs> And I, and I get my balls out, and as I'm opening the door, I think, this could actually be a foxtail salesman. <laughs> and I open the door, and Dave is standing on my front porch with his balls out. <laughs> and we had this great Mexican standoff of both of us going, I'm not looking! I'm not looking! Ten minutes later, the doorbell rings again. It is a foxtail salesman. <laughs> He's got his balls out. I don't know how he knew about the game. Apparently it's a part of their new package. <laughs> I will fucking take that, groan. That is all mine. Anyway, I was in this guy's uh, fully decked out garage with the, the bar and the sign on the wall which said in big letters, if you're queer, you're not welcome here. And I was like, that is a, just a shitty thing to put out into the world, you know? And, and the only, there was one thing that made me feel better about the whole scenario, and that was when I looked around his garage. And he had like the bar and like the pool table and he had this seating area with a TV and in it he had one of those little beanbag footstools. And it made me immediately happier that at some point this homophobe had to go into Harvey Norman and say, hey, can I have a poof to stick in my man cave? <laughs> Small amount of karma. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not good at compliments. I'm not good at complimenting people. I, uh, I was hanging out with my friend Amy recently and a couple of her friends and I noticed that she'd lost weight and I'm like that is a, a pretty safe compliment to go with like that can't really backfire I'm gonna give it a crack right and I said to Amy I went oh you've lost weight and one of her friends muscles in and pushes her out of the way and looks me in the eyes and goes um she's lost heaps of weight and I was like, I didn't realise I had to be so specific, you know? Because I think specific is good, it shows you're paying attention. But I also think that specific can be very bad, you know? Specific is like, oh, you've lost 12 kilograms, mostly from those legs of yours. Like, that's, that's no good, you know? Or like, uh, oh, you're down to one chin, well done. You know, or you, you don't sweat when you eat anymore. Thank God, because that was fucking disgusting. Like, that's, that's specific, but bad. I, uh, I was reading an article not too long ago, and it was called Easy on the Eye, Maybe Also on the Brain, and it was talking about how when human beings are around attractive objects, their brain actually functions at a higher level. And I thought, that's great, because it backs up what I've been saying all along. I was never dumb. My school teachers were just ugly. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been my time. Have a really great night. Cheers. Thanks so much for having me.